All right, Module 5, Part 1 of Module 5, Simplifying Rational Expressions. So the first objective I broke up into two parts. And the objective is simplifying rational expressions by factors. In this video, I'm going to take you through Part 1. And in the next video, I'm going to take you through Part 2. So Part 1, you take a rational expression from what's called expanded form to factored form. And so consider while you're working through this, uh, your goal should be able, you should be able to determine what strategy to use for factoring, um, either the numerator, the denominator, or both. Because in this case, a rational expression has a numerator and a denominator, and most likely they will both need to be factored, but you have to determine that. So that is your goal as you're working through this part of this objective. So let's move to an example. So again, I wrote out the objective, the part, and the goals here. And it's taking a rational expression from expanded form to factored form. Now let's talk briefly about a, what a rational expression actually is. I've given you an example of one here, and it's an expanded form, meaning it's in standard form or it's in um, its original form. Rational expression means that it has a numerator and a denominator. So it's in the fraction. A simple form of a rational expression is 3 over 4, meaning rational expressions, again, I'll write that out, so please write this down as well. Expressions have a numerator and denominator. So anytime you hear the word rational, you should think fraction. You should think numerator slash denominator. That's what makes it a rational expression. You should be familiar with both the numerator and denominator as they're both quadratic expressions. So you should at least recognize that from past modules that we've worked through. Um, and we're going to factor these quadratic expressions. That's what this whole video is about. So at the end of this video, if you, if you can see, I've taken you through four parts. Part one here, expanded form of a rational expression. Part two, up here, getting it to factored form. Part three, down here, discussing the excluded values or stating the excluded values. And then finally, getting it all the way to part four, writing it in simplified form, meaning you cancel out like factors. So because this is, I just, I need you to be able to master part one, and so I'm only going to do part one in this video. So please follow along as I do this, and please take it step by step like I take it, because you need to be able to master this before you move on to part two. So I'm going to take something, and this is a good thing for you to reference this up here, this example I've given you. Uh, this rational expression, x squared minus 81 divided by x squared minus 8x minus 9, I'm going to take it from this form, expanded form, to this form, factored form, in this video. So as you're practicing as well, after these videos, this is a good sheet to reference to make sure, hey, my factored form looks something like this example, so I must be on the right track. Uh, you can use it just as a reference point as you're working. So let's begin with an example. If I do number one, and I look at it and analyze the information, I would first say that it is indeed a rational expression because it has a numerator and a denominator, a top and a bottom. So the first step in rationalizing I'm sorry, the first step in simplifying rational expressions is to decide if the numerator, denominator, or both need to be factored. I wrote that right here. Then if they do, decide what strategy to use. And these strategies should look familiar to you. Uh, you find the greatest common factor, you can use the MACAB t-chart, or you find the difference of squares. It's all from module three when you use factoring to solve quadratics. And so this process should at least be familiar and hopefully come pretty quickly to you. So if I look at number one, the numerator, if, and I'm going to break it down like this, so please write it exactly like I do initially so you can kind of organize your work in a way that makes sense. I'm going to look just at the numerator for now. The numerator is 3n plus 27. So if I want to consider this to be factored, I'd first notice that it has two terms. So I automatically know that the MACAP t-chart wouldn't work to factor this, because the MACAP t-chart again is ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. 
you technically you typically need three terms and a can't equal one. In this case, there is no a term. There's only a b term and a c term. So that's out of the question. Difference of squares, it does have two terms and it does have a b term, but 27 is not a perfect square. And remember, the difference of squares is something like x squared minus 49, where the c term is a perfect square and so is the a term. So finally, that leaves me the, the GCF strategy. Can I take a GCF, a greatest common factor, out of this term, 3n, and then 27? I notice that they both don't have n's, so I know n won't be a part of my GCF. 27 would have had to have an n in order to take out an n. Uh, so that's out of the question. So then I just consider the numbers. I know my factors pretty well of numbers, so I know that 3 and 27 have a common factor, but if you didn't know that, you could do the factor tree. 3 is prime, I don't have to break it down anymore. 27 breaks down into 9 and 3, and then 9 breaks down to 3 and 3. So, they do indeed have a number in common. It is 3. So I do have a GCF. So I'm going to begin writing my factored form of the numerator. The GCF is 3. And then I write what remains inside after I factor out inside the binomial. So this process, hopefully you remember, I take the first term, 3n, and divide it by the GCF so I can show side math right here. 3n divided by 3. Remember, if you don't show your side math, I can't answer questions unless you try your side math. So 3 divided by 3, they cancel out. I am left with just an n. Now the second term, 27 divided by 3. In this case, 27 divided by 3 is 9. It's a positive 9, so I have 3 times the binomial of n plus 9 is my factored form for my numerator. I'll make note of that, so I'm going to square that and make note that that is my numerator. So I'm done factoring my numerator. I need to go to my denominator now. Draw separation and then write denominator. As you're watching this, if you feel comfortable factoring, then you should be pretty A-OK -okay while doing this step. But again, you need to be able to master this process in order to move on to part two of this objective. So my denominator is 6n squared plus 54n. Same process I have to consider. Can it be factored? And if it can, what strategy do I use? So if I would think about it, I'd go through the process again. It has two terms. So again, MACAB t-chart probably wouldn't be a good source for this. You could, but it, it would just look different. Difference of squares wouldn't work either because 54 is not a perfect square here, and difference of squares only works with no b term, and this b term does exist. So I, again, I'm back to the GCF, finding the GCF. So now I have to consider the numbers 6 and 54, find a number that is in common with them. 6 breaks down into 3 and 2, 54 breaks down into 9 and 6, and break it down to 3 and 3, and 3 and 2. Now, 3 is in common, but there is a number that's bigger that is in common, and it is 6. So my GCF for the numbers, and I'll write factored form down here as well for the denominator. My GCF for the numbers is 6. In this case, they do both have an n. One has an n squared, one has an n. And if you remember, I take the lowest power out for my greatest common factor for the variables. So 6n is my GCF. Now I need to factor that out. So I take first term, 6n squared, divided by the GCF. Sixes cancel out. I have two n's on top for n squared, so one of them cancels out with the one below, so I'm just left with n. And then finally, 54n, divided by 6n. And 54 divided by 6 is 9, so plus 9, and it's positive because my answer was positive, or plus because my answer was positive, and then the n's cancel out, so I'm just left with 9. So this is the factored form of the denominator. So at this point, I am done. After I write it all in factored form, I am done with 
part one. So I'm going to label this factored form of the rational expression and my numerator exists here three times n plus nine and my denominator exists here. We just factored it. 6n times n plus 9. Now again, this is the answer I'm looking for for factored form. So as you reach this point, and if you hopefully you followed along, please do follow along and take the notes as I'm writing this down. You need to get to factored form here. Not every time will the factors look the same exact thing as what I've found here. It just depends on the rational expression that's given to you. So that's where you have to really consider what strategy of factoring do I need to use and why. So at this point, you are ready to try number three down here and just do part one for number three. When you get done with number three for part one, you may move on to the next video, but please raise your hand so that I can check your work so that I know that you're tracking with this process.